Hello again, everyone. Tim here from timscomputerfix.net. Got another power jack job video here for you. This one is going to be on a Sony VAIO model PCG8115L. And I'm going to show you how to tear the laptop down and repair the power jack here and also to how to avoid a pitfall in ordering these power jacks. Uh, there's another model number to this. It's VPC F136FM. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to be doing is removing the hard drive, the memory, and the battery. And I've already done that here. And then we can uh, just go ahead and remove all the screws on the bottom of the laptop. And we'll continue on to tear down the rest of the laptop here as we go. So replacing the power jack on these model laptops are pretty straightforward. Not too difficult, no soldering involved, it's pigtailed. But there are a few things you need to watch out for and we'll get to that here in a few once we get all our screws removed here from the bottom of the laptop. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys what's wrong with this power, particular power jack. The, the center plastic barrel is busted out. You see those two pins that there should be a, a plastic barrel there that the power connector fits over. So that's our issue with this one. One thing to watch out for with this model laptop is there are two different size screws. And when I say two different sizes, one is fatter than the other. So if you look here, we've got a skinny one and a fat one. So, you know, if you feel more comfortable labeling all of these uh, places where your screws go at the bottom, feel free to do so. And I'll kind of demonstrate that here. We'll just uh, take some uh, painter's tape, um, kind of mark, mark where some of these different size screws came off of. Just a really simple way to, to label and mark everything so we don't get our screws mixed up. I find using painter's tape works very well. It's easy to write on and the best part of it is when you remove the tape, it doesn't leave any residue, any film. You don't even know it was there once those stickers come off, but it, it holds really well. We'll just go ahead and mark the rest of our screws here just to make notes because it may be a week before I get back to this laptop. It may be a few days just whenever my power jack arrives. Sometimes you have to order power jacks Hopefully you have them in stock, but this is all good because a few days later you may forget where these screws go. Okay, once all the screws are removed from the bottom, we can just pop off our button board here. And it just pretty much lifts right off. Just gently lift it up. It'll come unsnapped. And there's our button board and that already exposes half of our power jack right there. And we can see here how we can see the power jack itself and then the pigtail runs down into the slot and goes to the bottom side of the computer. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and just remove the keyboard. It's not necessary, but it's just kind of sitting there loose. So we don't want to damage nothing, so we'll kind of just flip it back. Once the button board is removed, it's easily exposed. Just undo our slot here. Move it out of the way, our ZIF connector. Then uh, I think this little smaller connector doesn't have a ZIF. It just pulls straight in and out. So we'll just slide him right off. And we can just remove the keyboard. Right, so we can take a plastic tool now and just kind of pry up, remove the bottom casing. Comes right off. And once it comes off, it pretty much exposes the entire motherboard from the underside. So we just lift it right off. That comes off like so. And that's going to expose the rest of our power jack. Shown here, we'll get a little closer. It's close to the, the heat sink fan. Get it into position so you can see a little better. Yeah, and there's where, right there is where the power jack is connected to the board. And you can see where the pig, pigtail leads down and plugs right into the board at, right there. Okay, we'll flip the laptop back over and you see the power jack is covered by a metal bracket. Now this bracket 
I want you to take note right now of what it looks like because we're going to have to mod modify this bracket when our new power jack comes in. I'll show you why here in a minute. But we're just going to take this one grounding screw out. Then I want to zoom in a little closer and I want you to pay attention to the area I have here in red. Notice how the the bracket folds down and around the entire power jack here. But the area right there in red is the area that's going to have to be modified once our new power jack comes in. Now I say this because there's different versions of power jacks that goes into different Sony laptops. But a lot of what you find on eBay, at least that's where I get my jacks from, I have different wire harness. It's the same jack, but the wires are attached differently to it. So there's going to be some modification to be done here. But first, we got to remove that bracket. Then we're going to sort of remove the jack itself, kind of pry it up, pop it out. Might have to work with it a little bit. But once it's out, it's out. Good to go there. Now here's our new power jack. And notice the area in red here where this pin is attached to the power jack. That is a little different than the original power jack. So we will have to make modifications to the bracket. All right, so we'll stand the laptop up on its side. I found it better to do it like this to feed the rest of the power jack through. We have a microfarad there that's wrapped up in the black tape, but you pretty much just unplug the jack, pull it out, take it out of its lead. We'll feed it back through the, from the bottom side of the board to the top. Pull it out like so. And then we'll back it through the other way. Pull it up from the top of the front side of the board. Okay, once that's out, we now have our new power jack shown here. And we'll just do everything in reverse. Feed it back through the top side. Get it fed back through. Position it properly. Once everything is fed through there, we want to be sure we position the wire back to where it was and it's proper trace. Pull our ferret through. Work with it a little bit. It'll fit. And then once that's through, we can plug it back in and continue from there. Okay, from the top side, we just push our jack back into place. It, it fits just like the original jack did, except now we have the issue of this connector lead being in a slightly different place. So in a second here, I'm going to be showing you the modification that I did on the on the top bracket. But first we'll go ahead and get the bottom secure, get it, feed the wire back where it needs to go on the bottom side. And we'll get everything plugged back in. Now you may have to work with this fared a bit to get it to go in correctly, reposition it maybe. But um, as long as it's there, you don't have anything to worry about. So we'll get everything put back into place. Sort of take your time. And now we'll plug it in. Good to go there. Make sure all connections are good. Now here's where I'm going to uh, show you with the uh, bracket modification I did here. So we'll put our bracket on the top. And when I get it on there, you'll notice that I had to take a, a Dremel tool and just basically cut off a part of the bracket. 
if you notice there, the bracket is not making contact with that one top lead that comes out. We'll get a little closer here, and now you can see the part of the bracket that I cut off. Now we want to make really sure we got proper clearance there because we do not want that bracket making contact with any metal on the power jack itself. So just make triple sure that if you do this modification that you have proper clearance from that lead. You can test with a voltmeter to confirm. Great, so we'll get our negative terminal screwed back on here, our negative ground wire, that's important. And then from, from there everything is pretty much in reverse. Again, I want to stress, be sure that this bracket is not touching the lead on the new power jack. We don't want to short and cause problems with the motherboard here. So we have our negative terminal on. We'll flip it over. We'll start putting things back together now. Put the back casing on. Get it turned around right. Check our connections. Check our wire routing, make sure everything's good. It's probably a good idea before we do this to confirm there are no shorts with your voltmeter. Super important. Now we have our taped screw holes that are marked screw holes so we don't have to worry about getting confused. Again, it's a good idea to do that. If it doesn't take two, two seconds to... Uh, Tear off a piece of tape there and just make notes. Keep you from making mistakes. We got all our screws back in now. We're going to put in a hard drive. Get it put back into place. You know, I'm really glad they're making uh, these Sony Vios a little easier to get into and replace things like the power jack. But what I don't understand is, is why they keep making power jacks like they do. I mean, they do kind of break easy. Uh, you think they would learn maybe from like Apple or something and, uh, you know, come up with a better solution on laptops with power jacks. But, oh, well, it keeps me working, keeps me with a job. So I guess I can't complain there. We're going to put our keyboard back on here. Get all that hooked back up. Get the ribbon cable slid back in. Make sure all of our connections are good there. Should be good. Clamp it down. Right, flip it over. And now we got our keyboard back into place. Right, once we got the keyboard down, good and secure, we'll go ahead and get our button board put back on. Just as easy as lining it up. Snap and get right into place. No issues there. Okay, flip it back over. We have a few more screws to Get into place. Also got a CD DVD drive to kind of slide back in. Get it all secured. And if everything is done properly, shouldn't have any screws left over. See, we're using our marked holes here for our screws. And here's our CD, DVD, ROM drive. Secure it into place. Tighten it down. Got 
got another stick around to put in here and then we'll start putting our back cover doors on that looks good put our memory door on our panel secure it I believe we have the hard drive panel make sure our hard drive sec secured down properly hard drive panel on secure it and now we're ready to test and there's our new power jack looking good that's how it should look and now for the big moment we'll plug her in and give it a test and see if it lights up okay so we'll just so we got a charging light that's a good sign open it up here and just power it on and we'll see if we have any um, a post which would be good got a green line on the power button good sign see if we get a post screen and we do lit keyboard also looking good so we'll just test everything else out once it fires up but hey I hope this helped thanks for watching my video please rate and subscribe give me some feedback if you like I appreciate appreciate everybody who's watch who watches my video and supports supports what I do here you can find me at timscomputerfix.net that's where you can find my new website my business is Tim's Computer Repair, TCR. Again, thanks for watching my video. And we'll see you soon.